Okay, we're back now with uh, Liza Pekarski. I got that right. You got it right. Liza Pekarski. She's with uh, the Retreat Behavioral Health. And uh, you are, um, well, tell me what you do for them. So I am their regional director of marketing, but I actually wear a few different hats there. So I work on the business development team. Um, and I also, being a clinician, I do the clinical reviews since we're, we are a primary mental health program. We have a primary mental health component um, with our ACA license. So I do a lot of their clinical reviews. Um, so any patient coming in, um, we work with the clinical team to ensure the appropriateness um, for our program. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Now, uh, retreat. Is it? Is there one location? Is this multi locations? What, yeah. tell, tell us about the retreat. So, retreat originated in Pennsylvania, in Ephrata, Pennsylvania, um, about nine years ago, and we opened Florida in Lake Worth, Palm Beach, and that was about four years ago. And then we recently opened Connecticut, um, right before COVID. So, um, oh. we opened our program in Connecticut and. Then we also have some service centers, so behavioral health centers, which are outpatient um, centers throughout Florida, Pennsylvania, um, soon to be in New Jersey. So expanding little by little. Are you really going to go into Jersey? God we, bless you. <laughs> hey, I'm from Jersey. Uh, I live 20 years in <laughs> South Jersey. So okay, well, that's south and north, you know. Two where were you? In Bergen County. You're in Bergen, so yeah. Giants fan. And Giants fan. Yeah. So we have, you know, just, Eagles e down. Exactly. Yeah. So there it's like go. North Florida and South Florida, two completely... Yeah. Yeah, they'd actually talked about making a North Jersey, South Jersey, yeah. making it two different states. It makes so instead sense. of having just one state nobody liked, it was going to be two. <laughs> um, <laughs> we can say that. We've been there. Yes. Um, all right. So, excellent. What, what brings you to the EAP conference? So, Retreat actually um, participates in the, in the EAP conference every year. I've just had the pleasure this year to come since um, a few of our other partners who come weren't able to attend um, due to the changing of covid you know yes. situations and um, so we are we've been in attendance i would probably say every year since we've been um, open um, our medical director dr morales presents presented last year and also this year i believe on clinical pharmacology and mm -hmm. um, so we get very involved with the eap have you had a chance to meet some people and have some great conversation and, and you know maybe learn some new things yourself yes absolutely i think it's just you know, you get what you put into it, right? right. So um, this year, obviously, it's a little bit different with COVID. There's, it's a hybrid conference, right? So that's another cool component of it because we have access to the, the um, clinicians that are not coming or that are not right. attending. And so I think that there's going to be a good part for follow-up, a good opportunity for follow-up with those who haven't been in attendance. Yes, and you know, and I spoke to, to Don Maines earlier and, and Bob Lehman and, and some of the other people who helped put this together. Um, you know, and it's been problematic, but it's just as problematic just to keep, um, you know, retreat behavioral health. I mean, what kind of problems have you seen due to the COVID this year? 2020 has been a tough year. <sighs> How have you weathered the storm? Yeah. Um, so retreat is definitely, um, you know, everything's been impacted as a result of COVID. So just in terms of having to switch over everything from, in, page, in person to online. So our outpatient went completely telehealth and making the move very quickly. Um, but I say that retreat just operates fast and we are very forward thinking. So when this all, when COVID hit and we all had to stay home and it was only essential employees and our patients, um, of course, our number one responsibility was to keep our patients and our staff safe. Um, so we switched very quickly to telehealth for outpatient. And um, we are actually still, we're in like a hybrid right now for right. outpatient. Um, inpatient, we're just implementing a lot of new protocols, um, nursing and um, our admissions so that they're doing the COVID screens. And um, it, we definitely, it's impacted us tremendously because, um, you know, who hasn't it impacted? Right. And then just in, you know, somebody's exposed, the quarantine for two weeks and, you know, it, it affects the, the, you know, the staffing. Um, but I know retreat has definitely overcome some of those obstacles and it's become our new, I, I hate to say this, but it's become our new norm. So I think we've um, transitioned well into this. Of course, you're going to see some changes in the census and dips out of fear um, from the families wanting to send their um, loved ones away. But I would say that that's probably the safest place to be, right? They're removed. It's well, it's better than being on the streets. It's better than being out and uh, obviously uh, buying drugs and getting drugs, doing things mm -hmm. like that. We know that there's been an increase in overdose yeah. um, deaths. Uh, 
in Oregon, it was a 70% increase. So the most major metropolitan areas are seeing 50 to 60, 60% increases. So I think what's going to happen is in 2011, or 2011, 2020, <laughs> I'm going back. We are not doing yeah, 2020 we're not going, again. We're not going 20, when it's uh, 2021, I think we're going to have to all step up to the mat because okay. there's going to be a lot of problems. But tell me this. Uh, Perhaps you were involved in these kind of conversations prior to COVID. A lot of people talked about we should do some online or more online stuff, in not just in our business and in addiction business or mental health, but in all businesses. People are always talking about we should do more work online, more mm -hmm. work. In a way, this kind of forced our hand. Yes. Do you see this as the online presence you're developing, the the tele telehealth? Is that something you'll continue with beyond? Uh, COVID for the convenience of your clients? Um, I think it's going to, you know, I don't, I can't predict exactly what they're going to be doing, sure. but I do foresee that this is going to be the way of the future um, at retreat, um, like the hybrid model. And you know what happens is you just have more access to the community, right? If you're not able to drive and you're in um, early recovery and you can't, you know, have a car, or maybe license suspended. So this gives you access to this, which you might have not had before if you don't have the funds to Uber or whatever it is. Um, so I definitely think that um, we will continue to utilize um, not even if it's not for our clients just we've done webinars throughout COVID we've done a lot of CEUs via um, you know telehealth platforms which has been great and I think we'll continue and even as a clinician my private practice went completely telehealth um, and I do not foresee myself going back into the office anytime soon you seem very comfortable here. We got the camera, we got the mic, we're doing all this, you're very comfortable. Was that a hard adjustment for you to move on online and do that? Did you find yeah. any kind of deficit in how you can uh, react, interact with your client because of that? Initially, yes, but it was my own discomfort. Okay. It wasn't, right. I was like, oh, the clients are gonna be, you know, this is not, I don't wanna continue to see you because it's not face-to-face, -face, but it is, right? It's not that I'm sitting there you know, holding your hand. And I could still be doing um, the same thing from a computer screen. So we send, you know, it's hard. Sometimes you're uploading and sending some different um, documents for them to complete or just different assignments, sharing your screen. It's just, it's being innovative, creative. And I think that if anything we can take away from COVID is everybody has been greatly um, creative. Yes. You have to be. Absolutely. Liza, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for coming out to the conference. Uh, you'll be here next year, I hope. Yes, thank uh, you for having us, and I'm sure we will be here if we're invited back. Fantastic. If you'd like to learn more about Liza and uh, Retreat Behavioral Health, it's very simple, retreatbehavioralhealth.com. All your contact information is there, right? Yep. All right. Thank you.